Welcome everybody to Quality Sewing and Vacuums So Fun Facebook Live today. We have Sandy and Tony, and they are so excited to share with you all of the fun, fun things that they have brought in for you today. I bet you cannot guess what their theme is. <laughs> we are buzzing into spring. Buzzing into spring. So right? we can make oh my beautiful goodness. items. <laughs> yes. And we're so excited. It looks like I wore my sweater to match their their show today. He's gonna line up. <laughs> He totally did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Okay, well, if you're new to So Fun, we actually have 30, well, 29 live in person classes all around our 10 stores all around the Seattle area at our quality sewing and vacuum stores. We would love to see you there at one of our live events because at those live events, there is fun friends oh, yeah. and food and prizes mm -hmm. it is so so great it's a learning opportunity and when you sign up to be a member of so fun you also receive 20 percent off in our stores um all the notions and things and what we bring in specialty just for so fun because the things we bring in are only are uh, they're temporary they're only here for a minute, mm -hmm. what, the, what we bring in their specialty items. So anyways, we did want to let you know that our the items that we are bringing in are available until March 7th as well. So you got to get on right away and order those things if you want them. Some things are already sold out, but they'll tell you about that later. Um, do leave a comment down below in the the comments uh say hello let us know if you have any questions and we'll be able to get back with you about those questions we do have two fabulous prizes today uh that we will be giving away we will be contacting you if you leave a message down below and with that i'm going to turn the time over to sandy and tony thanks thank you very much well I'm going to start, so Tony's going to buzz out of here. She's making me buzz away. Yep, buzz off. Buzzing off. Away. Buzz <laughs> off. I'm going to start right over here with this book. It's called Honey Bee Hollow on Wander Lane. This book has a lot of really cute ideas in it. There's hot pads, little pillows, wall hangings, a wall quilt, more cutie patootie stuff, it, there are 12 books in the set, but today we are just focusing on this book. And if you would buy all 12, one for every month of the year, you could make this quilt. This is the month we picked, the, the bees. And in this book, you get the house pattern. And you also get all the, the strawberry, the flower, the bee, the butterfly. Right up here, we have hot pads that Lily made and she made this cute little wall hanging that you probably can't see real well. I'll bring it down. It has a lot of glitz and glitter on it and sparkle and gemstones. We didn't bring those in. We brought the button in and the buttons that she used there and it's just really pretty. All the pink buttons we'll talk about in a minute. Tony made this one. She quilted it with her Sashko machine. You're go, hear, Sasha, go. You're going to hear her yell, go. And she also made this one, which is wool. She did all the little appliques by hand, and then she added the buttons and the beads and all that cute stuff. So we brought in... Oh, and I did this one. Let me show you this one. We brought in these little Ackfeld wire hangers. Isn't it neat? It holds any six inch block, not just this one. If you look like they're a little bit different in how they do the scroll, that's because these are handmade in America. They're made in Missouri. I've been to their factory and it's really cool. Really nice finish to them. They have a wire on the back where you make a little hanging sleeve and slip it on the wire. And then for mine, you see I have these red buttons, my bees flying away, that come in this little pack. There are all kinds of buttons in here. There are red, there are pink, there are vintage, there are the flowers. 
I glued my three little red buttons right up here on with Beacon Fabri-Tac. This is a really nice glue. It's kind of between honey and syrup, more toward honey. It's permanent in 24 hours. It grabs fast, dries clear, is acid-free and washable. Andrea uses it on a lot of her cosplay costumes because it holds things so well. In one of the reviews I was writing, this gentleman wrote in and he said, you know, my mom doesn't have to fix my blue jeans anymore because I glue my own pockets on when they come off. This glue is great for gluing and hemming. So it's just a really nice glue to have in your stash of when you need a glue, when the iron doesn't work, when you got to hold something quick and fast. The other button we bought in was the B, and that came on this spring fling card. There's four bees and two beehives. And we brought in this cute little thread cutter. That's a bee. It has the razor blade right in there. You can stick it on the back so you could stick it to your machine front. And when you're doing chain piecing, cut your chains apart really quickly with that little blade. You can take it on an airplane because it's not a scissors and cut your thread so you could glue it inside of your um, needle case and you'd always have something to hold your to cut your thread real handy it's really cute Tony made this one she used her sewing machine to sew around her strawberries in a, a special stitch one of the things Andrea was talking about was one thing is already sold out. I'm really sorry about that. It was these glittery threads that you see that we've used. They are Glamour, 12 weight thread, two strands of rayon and one strand of metallic. So if you happen to come upon Wonderfeel Glamour, Tony will tell you a lot of things that you can do with that thread besides what we did. I used it both in my sewing machine and my embroidery machine and it just works so slick. Really nice. No worries about tear, about shredding or tearing or anything. It just worked nice. Then I want to show you this pattern. The Audrey Madeline Bag and Wallet by Cool Cat Creations. The girls made bags over here. And I made this one. It has a zipper on the front, a zipper on the back, a zipper on the top. And inside, it's got a couple slip pockets and another zipper. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's all there. And the pattern comes with a wallet pattern, which is snap closure, a bunch of credit card or gift card pockets, and then a place for the moolah, and it just snaps closed. When I made these, both the wallet and the bag have the kind of lining where you leave a hole to turn your whole bag, and then you close the lining up and sew it shut. And this is what I did. I took a, I sewed, well, first of all, I know that my sewing machine, if I take three stitches at 2.5, it's exactly a quarter of an inch. So I took three stitches down and back. I sewed all the way around the bag. When I got back here, I took three stitches down and back. That was my quarter of an inch seams. I also cut my foam a quarter of an inch shorter so it would not be in my seam allowance. You see that? So then when you go to turn it and you turn everything through this hole, It's nice and tight. And because you've sewn that, your seam allowances just pop right in where they belong. And then you can take it to your sewing machine or you can take it to your ironing board, give it a little shot of press, and then to your sewing machine, sew it closed. And you don't have to fight at the iron with trying to get the quarter inch seam in. You don't burn your fingers. And as you're turning something, you don't have to worry about it ripping back because that is good and snug with those couple stitches. So it worked really, really slick. Uh, 
If you haven't tried it, go ahead and try it sometime. You will be amazed. Now, we brought in a lot of different zippers for these bags, which are really fun. We have the Pam de Moore pink zipper, fuchsia, and that comes with the fuchsia pulls. But if you have other pulls that are number five, because this is a number five zipper, you could use them and, you know, make your zipper more colorful. Then we brought in the pink, black, and blue zipper tape. And this is like a nylon or polyester or something. It's not metal. So you can sew over it um, it's very easily. And we brought in these three do not come with zipper pulls. They are from Sassafras Lane. So we brought in the nickel zipper pulls and the iridescent zipper pulls. Aren't they pretty? And then we brought in snaps, both blue, pink, and iridescent. Sorry, I don't have a pink snap here. I used it somewhere. My iridescent one is right here. Isn't that pretty? Ooh. And then, here, we brought it. This is, remember my pedestal? I always have to have something on the pedestal. The ribbons got the pedestal this time. The tulip pink ribbons. They're just a beautiful ribbon. You'll notice difference in pricing in some of the packs. That's because some of them have five ribbons and some have six. But it's such a pretty ribbon. So with my Alice in Wonderland fabric, I use my Mad Hatter hat ribbon. And here's the cups for the tea party. And I use ribbon to make little lanyards just on webbing. I just love that little hedgehog. This one has a little fox. If you look up here, Tony put ribbons on all of her little bags. There's owls, a raccoon, then the pretty orange flowers. It's called strawberry daiquiri or something like that. Just vintage strawberry. Very cute, very fun. And it just adds a little something extra. I also put the ribbons on a little apron for my granddaughter. Right there across the top and right here across the pocket. Now I purchased this apron so to do it for the pocket I just ripped down just a little bit down the sides. Then I used this wash away tape from OESD. It's a very nice little tape for this type of project because it's paper on one side, tape on the other. When you peel off the paper, you get the sticky part. I put that on my ribbon and then I wrapped it around because I didn't have this sewn down so that it held the ribbon in place so I could sew. So you see right here, there's still ribbon. On this side, you don't see any ribbon because I took a Q-tip and washed it away. It's that easy. It washes away. So if you're a machine embroiderer and you do a lot of bags where they tell you in the hoop bags to put your zipper down and tape it in place and you usually take paper tape to tape it in place and then they tell you to remove the tape before the next step and when you go to pull up that tape, what happens? You start having some of your stitches pop so or get wonky. So use this. Then you can tape your zipper down, and when they say remove the tape, you can remove above and below your stitches and wet it with a Q-tip right at your stitches, and it will disappear, and you won't have to worry about ripping up any stitches or doing anything funny. I know you see numbers on most of the products. That's because when we do the live in-store shows, the customers get a sheet, the attendees, and the sheet is numbered with all the products, so it's easy for them to find. So if you're wondering what those numbers are all over the place, it's just for us. Oh, the other thing. I really debated what to put on my pedestal, if I should put the ribbons or if I should put these really cute 
Sarah Hart labels. To You Love Me. There's eight labels in a pack. And the two sides for this one, you would just sew down. I sewed all the way around because I made this for my granddaughter. And invariably, if there's a hole, she will find something to put in it. A spoon, a dinosaur, whatever she'd have sticking and then probably lift, rip her label off. So she, I sewed it all the way around. On a little wall hanging that Tony will show you later, I did this one made by me. This has... The top is um, where you would sew it down. The edges are finished. So you could sew it into a binding, onto a pillow case, you know, in, by the seam or by the, by the, where the pillow case and the cuff meet. It could be sewed there. And then this one I really love. Made under moonlight. Isn't that cute? Once again, the edges are all finished. You would sew it in by the top. And I sewed it to the sleeve of a jacket for my granddaughter that Tony will show you later. I just think these are adorable. Lily put this one inside of her jacket. And, you know, there's just a whole bunch of things you can do with them. And then finally, we are down to... Oh, this could have, this could have easily gone on the pedestal too. The Guide to Interfacing. It's a carry-along reference book. It tells you about every interfacing you can imagine. Sew-in, tapes, stabilizers, um, woven, non-woven. And then it, so you go to one, like here, woven interfacing. It tells you it could be sew-in or fusible. It could be made of cotton, cotton and poly blend, or poly. Then on the next page, it tells you brand names. Happens to be ShapeFlex 101. That's one of my favorites. I have a little example right here where it's a woven interfacing, and I have it pressed to just a piece of fabric. It's very lightweight. I use it a lot in machine embroidery. I use it in clothes. I use it in a lot of things. And then over here, she gives you tips. And the one that really struck a nerve with me was, if you find that your test piece is too stiff, cut your interfacing on the bias. It will soften the drape while also providing the support. So if you put it in a collar, if you cut it on the bias, your collar would lay with a better drape. And every single interfacing that they talk about, they give you fiber content. They give you, if you can't find what we're talking about here, HTC Fusiform, then look for HTC Ultraface, or look for Pellon Designer Light, or Pellon Soft Shape. So if you take this to the store with you, and your pattern says you need 950F Shirt Tailor, and they're out, then you could get one of the other ones. And in the very back of the book, there's a chart that tells you it's index of uses. You can use it for clothing. You can use it for tailoring, home deck, bags and purses. And then it puts an X by which one would be good for what. And the very last one is crafts. And you can use almost every interfacing you can find for crafts. So that is really, really, really cool. Okay. And I did want to give a shout out to the guys because at our last presentation, we said, ladies, you need this. And a guy reminded me, you're in the audience too. So hi guys. I hope you find something you like. Now it's over to Tony and she's going to talk about the quilts and the jackets. Hello ladies. We have had so much fun showing these products and doing the so fun and the ladies have just been great. We unfortunately have sold out on the 12 weight Glamour thread that we had brought in and we can't get it anymore. But I'm going to tell you a few things that you can use with any 12 weight thread. First of all, I've got a list of things here of what you can use 12 weight thread on and for. You can use it for thread painting. 
It puts a really nice design on the top of the fabric. Lily did... I'm coming, I'm coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. Lily did hers. And if you can see the thread painting, how well a 12 weight thread will show up on top of the fabric. You can also do cross stitching. It's, it is no different than doing hand cross stitching with a pearl cotton. You can use it for machine embroidery. This is what Sandy did. On here. And she took one piece. She wanted to see how well it would last. So she put it on a scrap ran it through washer and dryer on hot, and it came out absolutely gorgeous. The 12 weight thread nowadays are not gonna fade and get wonky on you. This was washed to death. <laughs> and you can see. Hot water wash, hot yeah. water dry. A I lot mean, of the, iron, there's many dry. of the quality stores do carry 12 weight thread. I think it's like the um, spaghetti thread, but it's a 12 weight cotton. Uh, so anything I tell you about will work with any 12 weight thread. So be sure to check out quality for the thread that they have. You can use it, all right, for the machine embroidery. If you're gonna use 12 weight thread, you slow your machine down. No jackrabbit stitching. You've got to allow the thread time to go through the disc and down to where you're stitching out. You're going to need to use a larger eye needle because you have a larger eye thread. So you want to use either a 90 or a 100 and not all 12 weights are created equal. Some are more tightly wound and some are a little looser. If they're 100% cotton, they may have a little halo. So you may need to go up to 100 or 110 depending on the thickness. You normally don't have to do anything with the tension because the machines nowadays, these wonderful machines at Quality Cells, have auto sensing on their tension discs so you don't have to do anything with it. But you slow it down, and if you have a hard time getting through the eye of the machine, you're not going to be able to use your automatic threader. That threader is a smaller hook on it, and it's designed for the thinner thread. So you are going to need to hand thread, but they stitch out gorgeous. You can use it for hand embroidery. That's what I did on, on the wool piece. Decorative stitching. You don't have to have fancy, you can use most of your fancy stitches on the machine you already have. Now, if you're gonna use it on your sewing machine, there again, you have to go slow. You can't go at a jackrabbit pace. You need to go at a turtle pace. You gotta have that larger eye needle. And I have an older FAF, so I do not have an automatic uh, disc uh, sensor. A lot of the newer machines do, so that when you're using a thicker thread, those tension discs, which are, are tight for the 30 to 40 weight, it senses and it opens up so it allows that through. On my machine, I have to lower my top tension almost down to zero so that it opens the discs up and allows the thread to come through. You want to use a 30 to 40 regular sewing weight or lighter in your bobbin because you don't want the 12 weight thread bunching up on top and a lot of it bunching up underneath. Now you've got bulk that's not necessary, but it stitches out absolutely gorgeous. You I can, do want to mention Lily's. Oh, if we come over here, Lily did the a designs. Really beautiful tablecloth with the OASD that I'm going to show you the designs. Some of them she went around twice. Uh, some she went around singly. And she did use the ribbons along here to decorate mm -hmm. that Sandy was showing you. Mm -hmm. So it stitches out gorgeous. You can use it for needle punch. You can use it for big stitch hand quilting. 
like you do the vintage or the country look where you have the, the larger stitches. I wouldn't recommend Glamour for that. That's got like a shiny rayon and metallic. And Dolly Parton wears glitter. You Not can have glitter. Yes, friend. country people wear glitter, don't they? You can, yeah, lots. You can do long arm quilting with it. Red work. You want red work to show. You want it to sit on top of the fabric. It's going to sit on top of the fabric better with 12 weight thread. Sashiko running stitch. Not in your Sashiko machine, but go Sashiko. You, can you hear my eyes rolling? I've heard her eyes roll every time we've done, but go Sashiko. I put a plug in. <laughs> The Sashiko running stitch would be the stitch you do when you're hand doing um, a Sashiko pattern. My Sashiko machine does not recommend using anything heavier than a 40 weight thread in that bobbin case. So you really can't wind the bobbin and put it in your Sashiko machine and be using it. But 12 weight thread is nothing to be afraid of. It just takes a few adjustments, but it leaves beautiful designs and beautiful embellishment. We had a ball with the Glamour, but like I said, there is wonderful, is carried in the quality stores, and they have the spaghetti 12 weight thread. Not all stores carry 12 weight thread, but you should be able to get it or order it at quality. I'm going to show you my little snip. Well, first of all, OESD, the bees. These are absolutely adorable, and I've never had a problem with OESD stitching out. There's all kinds of designs. It's mostly for a, a 5 by 7 hoop or bigger. There are a couple tiny designs that you could put on Let's like a 4x4. Four four. Take it out and take the glare away. Will that take it away? Yeah, no plastic. I don't know if you can you can see, but if you look up here on the quilts, this yeah. is so this is all OESD on the yellow quilt here and I did go around twice. You see the price? You guys are going to get a screaming deal on that price. You know what happened? There was a boo-boo in, in the main office, and they are standing by the price that was published. So you get a screaming deal with a 20% off. You will not be buying any of these designs for $28 anywhere. So it's a screaming deal, and they are honoring. Now, I use this on the quilt here. This I did around twice. If you can see on here, I did the design around once, and then I did it around twice. I don't know if you can, can you see? You see the difference? Mm -hmm. It's easy to do. If I do my design and it's done, if I don't change anything on my embroidery machine, I just hit the button again and it will go over the exact same pathway. So I can have more thread that's going to show up. I did it on these. I did it on the dragonflies. Um, I did it on my little wall hanging here. And it really shows up nice. These are fun designs. I'm going to show you a favorite thing. These little snips are the cat's meow. They belong on a pedestal too. <laughs> they have a little clear plastic, and I'm going to tell you, if you drop this puppy, you're, it's going to be gone. So Sandy had suggested marking it with fingernail polish, put tape on it, do something, because if you, if you drop this, it's gone. But it really protects the tip nice. What's nice about this is if you can see, it's got the little hook. It's got a little hook there. So if I'm doing jump stitches or if I'm unsewing a seam, I can slide it underneath and cut it, or I can slide it underneath and cut it. Now we all know we have used our little sharp pointy four inch scissors. And most of the time it works very well, but you're gonna end up that fifth time cutting your fabric 
or you cut cut the wrong embroidery thread and then you've got a mess this doesn't do it also what's nice is i'm not fighting for finger holes finger holes on the end this is just a light a light squeeze and i can use it either right or left-handed so it is a great little tool to have by your machine but be sure to mark your I've almost lost it a couple times so another thing I'd like to talk to you about is the cobblestone quilt pattern and we ended up bringing in the hexagon which I'm going to talk to you and show you about now on the pattern this also shows you how to cut for your uh, side pieces and the little triangles. And if we come up here to this blue quilt, my dragonfly, you can see down here, those are the half hexagons. And then if you come over here, here's the little um, tiny triangle. And here's, here's the other one that's a little bit bigger. And those are on this ruler. And this shows you where to cut. So I have four sizes on this ruler. I have two inch, four inch, six inch, eight inch. It shows you on the ruler, right here I've got my big triangle and I have my little one for cutting out. I also have my side piece for cutting out. It's all on the ruler. And one thing about this with the blue quilt, I did it according to the pattern. And I really enjoyed it, but if you know me, let's work smarter, not harder. I wanted to make another one, but I ain't doing that. Not, a, not again. So what I did, and you can do very easily, I come over to this quilt, and I, you see I either have the half ones here? That used to be a full hexagon. I just made it bigger with the extra hexagons and then I just cut it off. How easy is that? Makes it real quick, real easy, but I, I didn't want to have to go with all the little pieces again, but you can if you want to. Now what I'd like to show you is how easy this hexagon is. This is not, hexagon is not a bad word, ladies. And gentlemen. And gentlemen. This hexagon is designed so that you're going to be successful. Oh, also, before I show you how to cut it out, if you notice down here on the bottom, this shows you how you can do a two inch and add a round, which is what Sandy did. And this almost looks like a pineapple quilt. And it is so easy to do because to keep it accurate, you also would trim it with here. If you can see, there's a, a two inch hexagon here. So what she did, and she used a jelly roll. She just added a strip, a strip, and a strip, pressed it out. Then she added a strip, a strip on that side, a strip on that side, and pressed it out. Now to trim it down, instead of fighting with it with a straight ruler, all you have to do, as you can see, I've got little hexagons here. It's designed so I can put that second hexagon down on it and now I have an accurate for cutting. And all I have to do is turn it, lay that hexagon, lay that hexagon down and trim it and I will have accurate. And you can do it for all of them. The third one would lay it down, after, and this is after you put your extra ones on, but you lay it down and you just trim around it. Now, to cut these out, which makes it easier, and we've all had it where you've got your hexagon and you're cutting and you're cutting and you gotta turn it and you're cutting and you're cutting. Every time I move it, I run a risk of losing my registration and my accuracy. But this is an eight, and a, it's an eight and a half inch because it's an eight inch hexagon. This is a six and a half because it's a six inch hexagon. So if I'm going to cut a six inch hexagon out, I cut 
a six and a half inch strip. Okay? What that strip does is when I lay this down, I match up here on my sides. Now I have two stable sides, and all I have to do is trim here, trim here. And then I just turn it around and put this point down here where it would be. And I have my registration lined up so it's straighter. And then I just trim here and here. I am more likely to be accurate because I'm not continually moving and going around. So the strip system is great. And this little two inch hexagon, the two and a half inch hexagon is perfect for jelly rolls. Go figure. Now to use it, an easy way. Now you may think, oh, I don't do Y seams. We're not going to do Y seams. We're going to go dot to dot on our sewing. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. This here is a four inch hexagon that I cut out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my hexagon down on it. Now I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to go in the little hole, which is around it, and I'm going to mark it. I'm marking dots. These are my registration dots that I'm going to sew dot to dot. And each hexagon has the little holes so you can mark it. Now, if you can, I don't know if, can you see right there? See my little dots? Now, if I'm going to be stitching, Find my piece where it is at. I'm going to put the he I'm going to insert the hexagon into here. So what I want to do is I'm going to match up my outside edge, and I'm going to match up, and I'm going to put a pin right through that dot through my other dot. Now when I go to pin it, I do not lift up and pin it like this. As soon as I do that, I have shifted my fabric underneath. You want to be accurate so it's not frustrating. So what you want to do is you have your pin out straight, you take a second pin, and I'm going to pin it where I can lock that spot in. Now it's not shifted, it's not going anywhere. It's the same thing if you're trying to line up stripes. If you like embroidery, I love doing tile scenes. So when you're lining up the tree branches, this will help keep you more in alignment. So I have the outside edge. I just come in and I put my pin dot to dot. And you see me holding that seam allowance out of the way. It's helpful to not sew into that. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. So now that I have this, we're going to stitch it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the outside edge and go in. If you have this extra bulk because of the seams underneath the foot on your sewing machine, it lifts it up a little bit. And we've all been there where we try to start out and it gets kind of wonky. It's because that bulk is under there. So I want to sew into that bulk where it's not under my foot. Also, by starting at this edge and sewing in, it eases the fabric. Fabric in itself has give. So if I start on the here on the inside and sew out it's very easy to have that fabric stretch and I have a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch overhang. Every time I have to trim that hexagon down like that I'm losing my accuracy but if I sew from this side in it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to show you how we go dot to dot. Coming over to my Wonder Machine and this is like one that I have, which is fortunate because the other machine had more buttons and I finally figured out after it ran away from me, all you have to do to stop it is take your foot off the pedal. Turn that way. Oh, over here. Sorry. Hi again. I like using a clear foot because I can see where my needle's going down. If I have a quarter inch foot, 
it hides part of that. So if I have a clear foot, I can go down. And I had checked earlier, and I know that if I go right along on that part of the foot when it's down, I have a quarter inch. So I'm just going to take, ooh, Jack Rowett, here we go again. I just take a couple stitches forward, couple stitches back, and then I'm just sewing into the dot. I'm sewing into my dot. that hand away your right hand I know move it no well, don't don't keep it up by the okay. bed because nobody can see okay. what you're doing I want you to see yeah you want everyone to see <laughs> so you see I've got that sewn there now to sew that other side which is makes it easy I flip it And I can insert this. Because I'm going from dot to dot. I don't know if you can see my dots here. Mm -hmm. Going from dot to dot. There again, I'm going to take another pin. I'm going to lock that into place. I can go back here. I can go dot to dot, but you see, I've got the seams already there to it. So, the sand's in the way. Oh, my hand's in the way. Yeah. Okay. She's a lefty, so it makes it easier, you guys. <laughs> so, now to insert that, I have seams on both sides, but I have two seams here, so I'm going to start here because there's only one, and I'm going to go into that corner. So I'm not doing a Y seam, I'm putting down in my dot. A stitch or two forward, stitch or two back just to secure it, and then I'm stitching into my dot. And voila. You can see how nicely that lays. Now to do, the, uh, to do the other side, I do the same thing. I match up my edge first, and I'm going to dot to dot, and I'm going to stitch from here to here. And I just keep adding the hexagons on, and it is that easy. Another thing that makes it easy, because I've not caught these seams, into any of the other stitching. When I go to press, I can go least path of least resistance, or I can press it open, or if I have like a really light uh, fabric and I don't want it to show through, I can press this one out. You do not have to press it every single time you put a little hexagon in, but if you get a couple of them in, you might want to press because it's hard to press something that's big, huge. It's easier to press it as you go. But this way, it's going to lay flatter because I'm not fighting a seam that is caught in another seam. And it's that easy, ladies. This is And gentlemen. Great. And gentlemen. This is a... I'm training her. Great. She's in training. And if you go online to YouTube, which is our friend, type in Hexagon Ruler. There are a lot of videos that show you how to use these rulers and decorative stitching and how to, how to do the this. So don't think a hexagon ruler is a bad word. It's a good word. Now, and if you're really techy, yep. they have the the thing that you can just do with your with your cell phone. You get all the info you want. Right there. Okay. Tony's a little on the learning to be techie side, so 
I'm still getting phone 101 and uh, computer 101. <laughs> what I want to show you and talk to you about is this elemental coat pattern. Bring it over here so you can see. Remember the London shirt pattern? It didn't look like much until you saw what it was like on. Ladies, this pattern does gentlemen. not... And gentlemen, this does not do it justice. This pattern is so versatile, you can make it long, short. You can make it with a hood, without a hood, with a collar, without a collar, or just bind the top. It tells you you can make it out of all different kinds of fabrics. Do you want to hold this one right there? Yeah. Across your... No, not yet. I want to show Lily's. Oh, Lily's. So it says you can get fabric, you can make it, you can line it. This is what Lily did. And you see the zippers that are on here? I think uh, Andrea is going to do one of her Tuesday little videos to show you how to put zippers in. But these are the striped zippers. It's really cool. Lily had fabric and she lined it. You can do this with any of it. Another thing Lily did is she took the little snaps that we would brought in and put them on that and her hood. So that, because she has the collar, she put them on her hood. So now, what she can do is she can snap her hood on for when she needs it, or if she doesn't want it on, she takes it off. How cool is that? Give me the hood too and I'll put it away. Now, when I made it, I made it according to the pattern, and this is the f first one I did. You can see I have a hood. I did put embroidery on it like in here and up here and on the hood and I'm going to tell you if you're going to embroider on it do it before you put it together because I can tell you from experience it's a lot harder to do it after it's all together. Now this is quilted. I did not quilt it. They said you can go buy pre-quilted fabric for 15 to 20 bucks a yard. That's a little pricey. You see how the nice this is? Do you know what this is? I went to Ross and I got a quilted spread and I cut my pattern out of that. Now how easy is that? And it was a lot cheaper. So this is one that I did and I did it according to the pattern and I did bind around the outside edge, which was great. But you know me. I did not bind. No, I'm going to tell them that was my idea. Here's my pat. Here's my... Yeah, there's her, here's her little thing. I knew you wouldn't talk about mine at all, so I brought it in. I know. I know you, she Tony. Did, she did bind around hers, and she did bind around the sleeves because her, for her granddaughter who loves purple. Okay? So, and if you're making the coat and you make it too long, you can always cut it off and bind around the sleeves. But I'm thinking... Wait a minute. She made this out of a, a quilt, too. They tell you you can take one of your quilts and cut it up. I got news for you. I'm not cutting one of my quilts up. But I will go... Let me show this one. I will go to the discount places <laughs> and buy a, a quilt, a bedspread. I did not bind any of this. What you do, because I thought there's got to be an easier way, you take your quilt and you fold it in half. And you see I have binding that normally would go all the way around the quilt. So I fold it in half. I take my pattern piece. Now pretend this is a full-size pattern. And I lay it down on the edge. Now I would cut my side, my shoulder, and my neck, and I have an already bound front. Already bound front, because what I did is I laid my pattern over that edge, and now I don't have to bind it. I did the same with the back. I laid this on the binding of the quilt, and I don't have to bind it. I did the same with the sleeves because you have a hole 
how many inches all the way around the quilt that you can use. You can use the outside of the quilt. You can use the inside of the quilt. This also has a great uh, pocket. This is not your normal pocket. Usually you think, oh, two pocket pieces and it's going to be a lot of work. Hey, you have a left and a right pocket. I take that pocket piece and I stitch it down to the back piece. And when she has you put it together, you fold that to the front and stitch around it. And I have a pocket. It's easy as that. This is a quilt Sandy made for her granddaughter. I wanted to challenge myself. How many jackets could I get out of a queen size quilt? Well, I did this one, which is a 1214, and it's a longer one. And I did two jackets. I've got a 1214 and a 1618. Now, as you see, this one I did bind around because I ran out of the edging. I did this one, I didn't have to bind it. This one I had to bind. I still have fabric left to make a tote bag and all kinds of things. And if you can see, this is the inside of the quilt and this was the outside of the quilt. So I've got those options. I love this pattern. It's a very roomy, cozy, nice fit pattern. Um, comes I, in three sizes. Comes in so, a lot of sizes. Comes in five sizes, yeah. but three lengths. Size four, all the way up to size 22. Yes. And it comes in the different lengths, but you can make it as long or as short as you want. And I have very long arms. I call them monkey arms because I've got so long. But if it's a little too long, you can always just roll it up. It's, it's a decorative. Or cut it off and bind it like Sandy did. I did that because my fabric was more directional. So if yeah. I had put it on the binding of the quilt, I would have had up, down, upside down Eiffel Towers. So I had to bind mine so that the Eiffel Towers were all the right side up. Yeah, but if it's on the inside of the arm, who's going to see it? But it's on the outside. Well, too. on it the says outside. Paris, and I didn't want Paris upside down. No. Okay. But you still have space. There's, but you have a lot of binding. Mm -hmm. Work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. They're very comfortable coat. And what I did for decorating, if you look on this one, I had an extra dragonfly block, and I just popped it on the back, and I used my hexagon to put one outside border, and then I just put ribbon around it. That's all I did. It's that easy. So please think about it. It's also more cost effective. Fabric is fabric wherever you get it from. Whether it's repurposing a coverlet or repurposing shirts. Uh, but think outside the box. It's an easy pattern, well written, and it goes together slick. It is not like the major brand patterns that you can get for like $1.99 that the instructions can be confusing. They're a little, this here is straightforward, easy to make, and you're gonna wanna make more than one. It's like a, a potato chip. You wanna eat more than one, you're gonna wanna make more than one. And it's that fast. Well, thank you for stopping in with us today. Don't forget to leave a comment for the door prizes and they will contact you after they've drawn. There were two door prizes. Tell us where you're from. Tell us something about you. We'd really like to learn a little more about you. I love reading the comments. And let us know if you liked our bees. Yeah, mine flew off. She took hers off. <laughs> it flew stayed. off. Mine stayed. It flew off. It, it really off. did. I offered to stitch her beyond. Do you think she'd let me do it? No. When we came into the first show, it was like a bobblehead. <laughs> like that. It was flying. It was a live bee. Okay. Okay. We're done. Anyway, Thank we're you. done. Bye-bye.